And then here's little Tommy or little Susie, who at nine or 10 years old gave their life to Christ because they said a prayer in the excitement of not wanting to go and burn in hell for the rest of their lives. <laughs> and they go off to college. Yeah. And they walk away. And they do debaucherous things. And they live alternate lifestyles. And they do this and they do this and they do that. And then in their 30s, when they're married and they have kids, they come back to church because they feel some now moral obligation to be able to do these things because that's the package they were sold. And they walk up to the front and they say, well, yeah, I was saved when I was nine at a kid's camp and think that they're good. Yeah. We have sold them that false bill of goods. I caught myself. I was very good about it. We have sold them that false bill of goods. And that is one of the major reasons why there are so many heads and no one is, ready? Here's another word, submit. Right. Because Cindy will tell you, and anybody else involved in Living Acts 29 Ministries will tell you, I did not want to call myself Pastor Jamie forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. And when I finally, I, I had a conversation with someone who's very near and dear to me. He's like a mentor. He is a mentor to me. And we had a conversation about it. And then we talked and then we would have our staff meetings and we would talk. And one day in a video, I said, Pastor Jamie, it slipped out, right? Like I, cause I just got involved in what was happening. And every <laughs> one of them texted me like, oh, finally, wow, it's about time. You're finally going to step up. Can't believe you finally did it. Yeah. Ready? You're finally going to step up and take responsibility. Amen. Because guess what I get paid to do this? Yeah. Nothing. And you know what? That's what I got paid before everybody started calling me Pastor Jamie. Yeah. And that's what I'll get right. paid. Right? It's not about me sitting on this chair and everybody else sitting on all of these chairs. It's not about me standing up on high, looking down on everybody. It's not about any of that. And I'm so submitted to God that I didn't even want to be recognized. And it wasn't some false submission or, or some over, uh, some, some over hyped sense of, of, you know, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Surrender or humility. That's the word. Thank you. Um, it was legit because I understand, yeah. I understand the gravity of this. We had a class in school called Submission and Authority and by far my favorite class because it was the realist. No, listen, yeah. right? That one and righteousness killed me. But <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. You get beat up for 50 minutes and then you walk out feeling great about yourself. It's amazing how God does that. Yeah, I don't know how this works. <laughs> but for every one of me and you who are surrendered, humble, I, I, she'll tell you, we had our first beach service a couple of weeks ago. I was, yeah. I was, I didn't even think I was worthy enough to do it when I hit the beach, right? Like we got there, we set up and I'm, I'm going, Lord, why did you choose me? What? Instead of these people who have $250,000 laser light shows and smoke and everything else, and they have some celebrity come out and announce them. I watched a video recently of these celebrity pastors traveling around to each other's churches, announcing each other at their churches. And it was who could slap each other hardest on the back and pump up their ego and all this. Nowhere in any of it that I hear a single person say, hey, here's Brian. He's going to talk about Jesus. No, it was, let's give it up for Brian. Right. What's well, got oh. nothing to do with you or me or anybody else for that matter. 
Right. Right? We teach youth now at the church that we attend. That's and awesome. I have the privilege of being the co-leader of the high school boys group. And I stood them all up one day. And I asked them this. I know, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot. I know, but he's got me in, in my feels right now because this no, is so- No, I'm laughing because I'm on I the same, so I'm on the same journey he's on, right? So I stand them all up and I said, who's a sports fan? And they're all raising their hands. They're high school boys. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Giants fans, Eagles fans, Yankees fans, right? And I said to them, the Eagles were in the Super Bowl. When they scored a touchdown, what did you do? And they're all yelling and screaming. Well, you know. I said, is Carson Wentz going to show up at your house and pay your parents' mortgage off? No. Is, is Aaron Judge from the Yankees going to come by your house and tell you, don't worry about it. I got you forever. But we go nuts watching them on TV, millionaires on TV. Yep. But we go to church on Sunday or on Friday night and we stand there like this during worship. And then when there's a message going on that may actually be pretty good, yeah. there's no reaction. There's no interaction. And that is for the one who saved your immortal soul from being tortured in the fiery pit for all of eternity. I said, so Amen. I said, so to, to these boys. These are high school boys, okay? 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. I said, who's more important? And I could see the light bulb was getting screwed in, right? I could hear that <laughs> when the light bulb was getting screwed in. And I said, now, if you're willing to jump up and down and scream and yell for Carson Wentz or Aaron Judge or anybody else, why not spend a minute or two right now screaming and yelling for the one who saved your soul who spilled his blood and gave himself up for you. And the church that we attend is, is it's got a large building. Okay. Yeah. Apparently they could hear us clear on the nice. other side of the building. We are like, what in the world are they doing? There? They're all screaming, Jesus. One kid started crying. My man, Jamie just gave him a great word. <laughs> One kid started crying. And if Ooh. we could do, okay. if we could do to their parents what we just did to them, yeah, that is how we get one head instead of this crazy <laughs> thing that, that we got going on right now. Right. Yeah. I've, and I've had pulled up on my phone for a while now. Um, Acts twenty, verse twenty-eight, because I think that if we if we really get this down, this specific verse, this is what's really going to get you into focus. It says, therefore, take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. What do you mean? I bought this building. Yeah. Oh. But where yeah. did that money come okay. from? Yeah. Where did that money come from? <laughs> right. Where'd those people Absolutely. come from to supply that money? You know, yeah. it just happened. I know it. It's um it, and you know something else that this journey I've been on is these people that are and, and part of it is you've got you've got people that are coming into church that are devastated, right? They may never have known God, but they, they're like, man, I, I have nowhere else to turn. They walk into the church and they're, they're wanting to hear from God. And then, and I'm going to say it, you got some wackadoodle up on stage and he's got a specific word for them. That he got directly from God. Telling them God's going to prosper you. Nowhere has this person actually given them the truth of the gospel and said, hey, 
you really, this is where you are and this is where you need to be. And Jesus is the way you get there. You, you are a sinner. We, we all apart from Christ, we're sinner. We're not good. Matter of fact, when Jesus is talking to the, the rich young ruler, right? And the rich young ruler looks at him and says, okay, good teacher. What must I do to inherit eternal life? First off, he asked the wrong question. There ain't nothing he could do to inherit it. That's right. right. But Jesus asks the question, wait a minute, why do you call me good? Only God is good. Right. He doesn't qualify it. He doesn't say, well, you know, hey, you've done good things. But ultimately, no, he says straight out. Only God is good. And then he lists the second table of the Ten Commandments, which is this relationship, yep. right? Yep. And of course, the young man being arrogant, not understanding that Jesus just told him no one's good. He already told him up front before. He's, he's like, I'm giving you the answer right now. No one's good. And then he goes through those, those five of the Ten Commandments, right? And this kid, not hearing Jesus at all, says, well, I've kept those since my youth. Yeah. Well, then, then Jesus is like, okay, apparently he didn't get it. One thing you lack. Now, remember, now he's going to deal with this relationship. And he says this. He says, go sell everything that you have, give it to the poor, deny yourself, and come follow me. Now, I'm paraphrasing. I'm not, you know, reading that verbatim. But it says that he went away sad because he was rich. Notice, he thought he was good. Jesus had to point out no one. He didn't say no one but so-and-so is, right. yeah. he said no one. And that's the thing is we're afraid. We're afraid that we're going to offend people. But let's face it. The truth is offensive. Yeah. It goes against our pride. It goes against all kinds of stuff, especially on the inside of us, man. It scratches and claws because Let's face it, before Christ, we were following after the prince of this earth. Yep. We were his children. But we don't want to tell people that. We're afraid to tell them the truth. Yeah. And if start with, guess what? You're not good. But hey, guess what? There's somebody, despite your wickedness, who died and shed his blood and went through all that he went through on the cross so that your life can now be hidden in Christ. Yeah. So that your sins are completely forgiven. And you guess what? The Bible says that, you know what? If you say you don't sin, and I'm talking after Christ, the Bible makes it clear. You're a liar. Yeah. yeah. And you've made God out to be a liar. But guess what? We can go to, we can go to Jesus. We can go to God and say, God, you know what? I'm repenting. I really, I sinned today. I sinned. It was bad. But God, I'm I'm trusting in your grace and your mercy. And I thank you that you forgive me. And guess what? Our whole lives as Christians, it's a life of repentance. It's not just a one-time repentance. Come on. And that's a hard truth to tell people today. Come on. And that right there is the reason why. If your average church had two signs up this Wednesday, 7 p.m., Bible study, room number one. This Wednesday, 9 p.m., pick one. 
Joel Osteen is coming to our church to speak. No right. one would show up at that church until 8.30. The Bible study would stay empty, but at 8.30, there'd be a line down and around to see the celebrity or to hear Hillsong come and play at your church. Or, Oh, absolutely. Because we have not spent the time investing and i say we meaning the pastorate right right absolutely because that product doesn't sell let me go back to let me let me go into some scripture here okay let's amen go to, let's go to mark chapter 12 and i'm going to start okay. at verse 13 <laughs> then, then they said to some of the pharisees and the herodians to catch him in his words when they had come, they said to him, teacher, we know that you are true and care about no one, for you do not regard the person of men, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Shall we pay or shall we not pay? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, he, Jesus, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, why do you test me? Bring me a denarius that I may see it. So they brought it, the denarius. And he said to them, whose image and inscription is this? And I just, I see this. Who's this? Yeah. And they said to him, Caesar's. Verse 17. And Jesus answered and said to them, render to Caesar's the things that are Caesar's. And that's where everybody stops, right? Because even the world, even the people who've never gone to church have heard this story. Oh, yeah, hundreds of times. But they never finish verse 17, where it says, and to God, the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Now, I know the word is perfect. I know the word is the inerrant Holy Spirit word of God. But I really wish Jesus would have turned around right there and said, what's imprinted on your heart? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if God is imprinted on my heart, then I need to render unto God what is God's. And those of us who claim to be pastors, ministers, deacons, prophets, prophetesses, whatever, apostle, whatever you want to put on yourself, those of us who claim to be the people of God should have the image of God imprinted on us. So when Jesus went like this with the coin and they saw Caesar, he should be able to go with this with your little head and go, who is imprinted on you? Right. And let me just finish my thought. And yeah. you, can, you can jump right in. Okay. <laughs> and if we really considered ourselves people of God, it would never be a question to any stranger, non-believer, first-time visitor, or 30-year attendee who or what is imprinted on our hearts. Yeah. Go ahead. So in the Passion Translation... That Mark 12, verse 17 says, Jesus said precisely, the coin bears the image of the emperor Caesar. So you should pay the emperor his portion. But because you bear the image of God, you must give back to God all that belongs to him. And they were utterly stunned by Jesus' words. Yeah. Boom. So is the, is the Bible... <laughs> My job <laughs> is the Bible, whether it's in paper form or, or digital form. Oh yeah, and, and right? it's Whatever. in red. So <laughs> is it not red letters? <laughs> red letters. Is it not the inerrant Word of God, breathed by the Holy Spirit for repute, reproof? All right, repro reproof, 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 correction, and teaching. Right? Yeah. I tripped all over that. If it is. And it's even written in red. Yeah. But this is something. That end of topic. End of conversation. Right. End of argument. Because anything else you. Ooh, ready? Mm. 
anything else you're doing is not of God. Right. And this needs to be something that's not only taught, but reinforced. Because I think that yeah. the other thing that's lacking is the fact of follow up. We're great at getting that message out there and telling people how much they're a sinner and, you know, what they could potentially do. But where's the follow up? Well, Brian brought up another great point earlier, too. Correction. Yeah. Because I, if I had to hear one more time, never touch God's anointed way out of context, I would have lost my mind. Because guess what else the Bible says? It also gives me clear instructions on how to approach you as a brother twice, how right. to bring one or two people with me the third time, and then to bring you to the leaders of the church. And the leaders of the church aren't just the head pastor. Right. But we've lost the ability. Look, oh my God, look at what's going on in the world. You hurt my feelings. I'm suing you. Or this yep. what, the, what, the cancel culture BS. It's so permeated the culture that it's in the church and the church should not be anything like the culture. So now these lead pastors, these celebrity pastors, these, these, these people who think that they are above reproach are now untouchable to the point where they can't be corrected. They could be spewing straight heresy. Listen, there's one of them I was listening to the other day. He doesn't even believe that God is three beings in one. Oh, I it's know exactly who you're talking about. It's did modalism. He, did it's skip part of the Bible? And he's got a huge church. Huge. Huge <laughs> church. Packed every week. You got another one who says... Yeah, he's... He, yeah, he's definitely not a potter. I'm just saying. I, <laughs> no, I'm still... a huge <laughs> church you got another one somewhere down in north carolina who's such a diva <laughs> that people aren't even allowed to speak to him let alone get anywhere near him to be able to correct reproof re... how can you be a shepherd if you don't smell like sheep right and here's the deal the bible and this is the thing, like we we're talking about this and we're we're diagnosing the problem. But here's the deal. This is not catching Jesus off guard at all. Yep. As a matter of fact, he said it was going to happen. Yeah. He said that there's going to come a time when people and here's the key word. I want you to hear this. When people will not endure sound and doctrine. doctrine. Endure. Yeah. Meaning it's not going to tickle your ears. And people will turn away. And he's talking to people who claim to be believers. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, it scares me because you, like Jamie said, you've got these leaders and you hear these people there, they're, I'm going to make a statement. Okay. And it's just something for people to think about. All right. Most churches would teach that you, you still need apostles and prophets and, in all these things in churches today. Question. Since when did James, John, Peter, Paul quit talking to us? Right. Right. When? When did that? Why do I need new revelation when I have the revelation? That's right. right. That's why right. Why do I need that? Yeah. And and here's the thing. We got people we know who get caught up in this, who, oh, you know, I'm called to be, and they give themselves a title that God didn't give them. Yeah. And I'm like, this, this is the thing that's just, because you can eat bad pizza and give somebody just the, I'm going to say his name and I don't care. Like Jamie just did earlier. Kenneth Copeland. Who killed COVID-19 on March 29th, yeah. 2020. Oh, no. See, here's the deal. He killed it March, 9th, March 29th, 2020, and then turned around in his victory conference and blew the wind of God on it, even though he supposedly killed it March 29th. 
Here's another thing. Deuteronomy 18 teaches this. In order to be a prophet, your prophecies have to be 100% accurate. Yeah. It's either all or nothing. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not going to go around claiming to be anything like that because guess what? I don't even want to take the chance of missing it. <laughs> Dude. I don't want to take that chance. And I don't want to call myself an apostle because guess what? I haven't had a physical one-on-one -on -one encounter face to face with Jesus. And he didn't face to face standing in this room or wherever tell me go. Right. Go. Right. However, I've felt called to be a pastor. It wasn't some miraculous thing that just it was just it was it was a knowing by the word of God. Yeah. It just and happened I, to happen. No, I will even go. As far as, yeah, I will even go as far as to say, not only did I have that knowing, but I also found complete and utter dissatisfaction in doing anything other than it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I make money? Yep. Made a ton of money, actually. Made a lot of money. Made good money. I mean, listen, oh, I'm yeah, five okay. I'm bivocational, right? I still have a full-time job. I'm bivocational. But if I wasn't yep. doing the second vocation, everything that I earned in the first one would turn to ash. It would just be garbage, dung, filthy rags. And I'm not going to get into the explanation of filthy rags, right? Oh, we know what that is. <laughs> Disgusting. The ladies know. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you want At least further, once a month. If you um, want to know further, just go. please. So yeah. we'll read your Bible. So here's the thing, <laughs> and I want to study. <laughs> study the word. <laughs> Do it. Did you know bears eat children in the Bible? No, I just so. Yeah. Here's <laughs> oh we God. we've talked about a bunch of the problems. Right. And, and listen, I love having a heavy bag hanging from the ceiling that I can just wail away on, okay? Because there's so much. Right. But I want to start... We can do that about, all day. Yeah. I want to start... I want to bring this to action or a call to action or some sort of realization or change, okay? But there was one more thing I did yeah. want to point out. For those of us that consider ourselves pastors, teachers, preachers, what? you yeah. have to never forget, please, and, and anybody who has been around me on a regular basis for at least the last year has heard me say this about a hundred times. She's probably rolling her eyes right now because she knows what I'm going to say. You have the responsibility and the weight of eternity yeah. in your mouth, in your hands, and on your shoulders. Because it's right. not you. It is not you. The people that hear from you, the people that hear what you say, the people that receive what you say, you are literally affecting their eternity. And if I'm the one that says the wrong thing, like Brian said earlier, had pizza the night before and it was just, and I say the wrong thing and someone walks away and turns their back on God and never comes back, not only will they have to pay for it, but I will. Right. I will have to answer for that when I stand before the Lord. And guess what? I'm not the only one. So please take this calling. with the utmost seriousness, the utmost reverence, and the utmost humility.